Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are gonna do another story video, but we're not going way back in time. We're not gonna talk about some giant largemouth. We are gonna talk about last week. I literally just got off a plane. Last night I got home from a trip back east, spent a week, flew into West Virginia and fished Kentucky, Tennessee, and I mean we fished all over the place. Fished for musky, fished for smallmouth, largemouth, spots, striper, walleye. I mean, we just went fishing and had such a good time. Uh, I flew out into West Virginia, got picked up by our buddy Jared Caesar. You saw him in a video in Michigan this spring with Tim. Uh, he's a good friend of ours, lives out in that country. So hopped on a plane, went out there and just went on a road trip. And we drove all over. Uh, and there are some videos coming from this trip, a handful of videos. Uh, got to fish in an incredible tournament. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about is just some of my takeaways from that that whole experience. The biggest takeaway, man, it hit me hard. I'm not usually that emotional at all, uh, but I was shocked how hard it hit me getting back into that country, into Kentucky and Tennessee, and seeing some of that that bass fishing history, that stuff that we've lost. Uh, and I think it hits really hard for me because I came from that swim bait end of bass fishing, uh, not so much the tournament end. And in the swim bait game, it was so small a decade ago, and now it's such a vast thing uh, that there really is no history, right? The guys that were good, uh, the baits that were good, a lot of them, they almost don't even exist. There's only a handful of guys that, that know anything about them or even have samples to show you what the baits looked like. That history is virtually lost. Uh, and I think as a fishing community as a whole, a lot of our history is lost. So when we were, when we were down there, uh, I ended up getting to fish in a tournament. That's why I was out there ultimately. Uh, it's the Billy Westmoreland Memorial Invitational is what it was. Uh, it was there on Dale Hollow. And Dale Hollow, if you're not familiar with Dale Hollow, that is where the world record smallmouth came from. Uh, that experience, Billy Westmoreland... Uh, was the greatest smallmouth bass fisherman of all time. He lived there on Dale Hollow, essentially put Dale on the map, uh, was a finesse fisherman, wrote books, had a TV show. And I mean, you're talking about a guy from the backwoods of Tennessee with so much foresight that he ended up with a TV show when that really wasn't even a thing. I mean, so much foresight uh, with where bass fishing was headed as a whole he caught the majority of like the top 20 smallmouth in the world were caught by this one guy. I mean, 10 pounders, nine pounders, eight pounders, just fish that don't, I mean, I'm not going to say don't exist, but fish that hardly exist anymore. And this guy was just lining them up and knocking them down and doing it on finesse tackle, mostly four pound line, little tiny jigs. Uh, it was very sobering to be out there to fish on such a, a fabled fishery. Uh, a place with such history, and then to meet some of these guys. Because Billy passed away about 15 years ago. Uh, but unlike so much of fishing, that history has not been lost out there. When we got to that tournament, I mean, the guys in the event were Billy's friends. Uh, these were guys that knew him. The guys that won, we ended up taking second place in that tournament. Uh, the guys that won, they fished in the very first Invitational 35 years ago. Uh, they were still, literally still driving Billy's old bass boat. They had repowered it, put a new trolling motor, a new outboard, new equipment, but it was his old laser bass boat. I mean, so much history was there. And I think the, the hardest hitting part of it for me was because of, of how much time Tim and I put a couple of years ago into those spotted bass. Well, I say a couple of years ago, for years into those giant spotted bass. We were on that, that world record quest, which as you know, ultimately was a success. Tim held the world record for a long time. Um, that quest, there was so much that went on that nobody even knew about. Uh, the amount of time that was put in. To go back in time and land there at Dale Hollow and to literally see these old timers there who they were that exact same thing for smallmouth. Like, like we were pers pursuing spotted bass out here they're still alive, they know nothing about it, right? They, they don't know us from anybody. We're out there in Tennessee, and it, I'm looking back at a group of guys who they had that vision. 
they knew that there were world records in this lake. They were putting everything into it, pouring their heart and soul into it. And now fast forward, nobody knows those guys exist. They're still alive. Nobody knows them. Nobody knows their names. Nobody knows the baits they were throwing. And yet it shaped our industry and changed it forever. They've done so much to impact your fishing, to impact my fishing, and neither one of us knew it. Um, but you get out there, you shake their hands, you hear their stories, and you realize you know, there are things that, that I do today in my own fishing that are credited to these guys. They're still here, and I don't even know it. Um, that hit hard. Really, really powerful to be able to, to meet those people, to fish the places they fish, to hear their stories. Uh, and it was also powerful to bring Western techniques out there. You know, to go out there and throw the LV500, throw an A-Rig, throw a 10XD, uh, you know, all these different baits, stuff that's really fun that we do out here in the West, throw in swim baits, throw in glide baits, and the fish out there, they eat them just like they do here. Uh, but the guys out there, for the most part, just don't do it yet. Uh, it's really fun to exchange some of that information, too, you know, to find out what I was doing that, that is credited to these guys, and I didn't even know it, uh, versus bringing things out there that those guys and those fish have never seen uh, was an amazing experience. So we're going to bring you a lot of that footage. It'll take some time to get it together, but I'm sure two or three videos will come out of it over the next month or two. Um, but it was, it was so sobering on the one hand, and then on the other side, it was, it was so much fun to travel. I mean, we fished Cave Run. We went down to Kentucky Lake. We got to fish a private lake down there. They call it Lake X. That was a blast. Um, where else did we go? We went all over the place, fished all over Tennessee, came back up, fished Dale, um, fished Cumberland. I mean, such a road trip in such a short period of time, but throwing the things that we throw here, the stuff that I had tied on in my rod locker here, I tied on out there in Kentucky and Tennessee and just went right back to catching fish. So much fun to see truly how universal the information is. Uh, I know a lot of what gets said out here in California is kind of boxed up as that's California. But a bass is a bass. It doesn't matter where you go in the country. It doesn't matter if it's a small mouth, a spot, a large mouth, a striper. It doesn't matter. Those fish feed the same ways. They line up the same ways. They feed at the same time periods. It's, it's incredibly predictable both directions, from east to west, it's incredibly predictable. The baits that work at one end work the same at the other end. And it was really fun to go out there and not just tell you guys about techniques that work out there in the east, or that our techniques will work out there in the east, but just to go out there and to experience it and consistently catch fish was really fun. So we look forward to sharing that content with you. Uh, but I just wanted to share some of my thoughts with you today about how important it is to remember that bass fishing history remember where all of us came from, and then keep that in mind as we all go forward together and continue to innovate and take bass fishing to another level. Remember where we came from, who got us there. Some of those guys are still around and they do not get the credit that they deserve. So remember that. Remember, I don't care if it's a, a guy that shaped bass fishing or it's your grandpa that took you out on his boat. Spend some time with them while they're still here. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll talk to you soon.